shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the bed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To Lord, and to the Lord's grave. On this, the Sunday after Christmas, the Church asks her children to meditate upon the Holy Family, the Holy Family which we see in the stable of Bethlehem. Jesus at its heart, Mary and Joseph, bending low in adoration. The church then offers us other scenes from the childhood of Christ. Anna, Simeon, come into our prayers and are there for our meditation. And so we offer this Mass in thanksgiving for the blessings of all that we receive from family life. This Mass is offered for Pat's intentions. And as we come before the Lord to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant, to plead the sacrifice of Calvary, so we call to mind our sins and rejoice in the forgiveness that Christ brings. Genesis. The word of the Lord was spoken to Abram in a, in a vision. Have no fear, Abram. I'm your shield, your reward will be very great. My Lord, Abram replied, what do you intend to give me? I go childless. Then Abram said, see, you've given me no descendants. So a man of my household will be my heir. And then this word of the Lord was spoken to him. He shall not be your heir. Your heir shall be of your own flesh and blood. And then taking him outside, he said, Look up to heaven and count the stars. If you, if you can, such will be your descendants, he told him. Abraham Put his faith in the Lord, and counted those as making him just God. 
The Lord dealt kindly with Sarah, as he had said, and did what he had promised. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the time that God had promised. Abraham named the son born to him Isaac, the son to whom Sarah had given birth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. O oh, blessed are those who fear your Lord for all his words. A reading from the letter from Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race. The saints, he loves you, and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive each other as soon as the quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you, and then you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. <coughs> Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ, in all its richness, find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom, with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God, and never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, give way to your husbands as you should in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and treat them with gentleness. Children, be obedient to your parents always, because that is what will please the Lord. Parents, never drive your children to the end, or you will make them feel frustrated. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At various times in the past, and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but in our own time, the last days, He has spoken to us through His Son. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, 
You see this child? He is destined for the fall, for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the Lord the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favour was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. anybody who had a Christmas card from the Archbishop? <laughs> Very good. I'm not the only one. Excellent. Hands up anybody who's had a present from the Archbishop. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Dominic. <laughs> and here it is. Um, Archbishop Longley has a tradition. He's been on Archbishop now for 10 years. On the uh, Immaculate Conception, it was the 10th anniversary of him coming as our Chief Shepherd. And um, for those 10 Christmases, Archbishop Longley has written to his people um, a diocese that stretches from the middle of the Thames, uh, 200 yards at the end of Ferry Lane, to the other side of Stoke on Trent. Um, it's a vast diocese, but his grace writes for us all. And his present to you is the fact that you don't have to listen to me preaching yet again over the Christmas season. So, the pastoral letter of the Most Reverend Bernard Longley, Archbishop of Birmingham, for the Feast of the Holy Family, December 2020. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this child is destined to be a sign so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. May I first of all wish you and all those close to you a blessed and happy Christmas. Every day of the Christmas octave in the week leading up to New Year's Day is a continuation of the celebration of Christmas. But I know that this year, because of the coronavirus restrictions, it will be much more difficult for us to maintain the Christmas spirit across the traditional 12 days. Today's Feast of the Holy Family it's particularly poignant in a year when it has been impossible for our families to gather together as they usually would. Perhaps this serves to emphasise some of the things that we can easily take for granted about family life and the value of our relationships. The family is part of the natural world that God has created and entrusted to us. All living creatures exist in some sort of kinship, guaranteeing their continuity and sustaining the quality of their lives. Pope Francis has said that we need education in the care of the common home to help people understand that environmental problems are linked to human needs. From the very outset of our lives, the human needs on which we depend for life itself find their natural setting in the family. From the gift of life itself to the loving provision of food, shelter and all the benefits of human contact, the family is the gift that keeps on giving. A newborn baby becomes the focus of love and attention on the part of parents and family, not because of anything it can do, but simply on account of its being. With the birth of his son, the father has revealed his unconditional love for us. 
irrespective of our ability to achieve anything in life or to merit God's love. St. Paul put it this way, It is proof of God's love for us that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. We see this unconditional love in the Holy Family. Even when its demands cause some perplexity, St. Luke's Gospel indicates something of this where it describes the journey of Mary and Joseph to Jerusalem, taking the infant Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord. The evangelist says, the child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him. Looking back on the closing year, with all its extraordinary ups and downs, we may not always have seen the sense of what was happening to us or our families. We may often have felt anxious or perplexed about events unfolding around us, locally or nationally. At times of crisis, we tend to fall back on those things that are fundamental to our lives and our beliefs. Hence, the need for our family and for our faith have been central to surviving 2020. This year we have missed those very special expressions of family life that continue to make Christmas an important season for believer and non-believer alike. Our parish communities have done their utmost through the continued opening of our churches alongside the live streaming of Mass to sustain the life of faith within our families. The familiar saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, can never have been truer than it is for 2020. Family life and Catholic faith teach us the hope that the things we have glimpsed or experienced in part will one day find their fulfilment in the kingdom of God. The Holy Family of Nazareth shows us that we are called through Christ to the eternal communion of love and life in God. As the new year approaches, we ask the Holy Child, destined to be a sign so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare, to give us the courage to bring our secret thoughts to God. May the Holy Family of Nazareth Help us all this new year, 2021. With my prayers for you and my kindest wishes this Christmas time, yours devotedly in Christ, Bernard Longley, Archbishop of Birmingham, given at Birmingham on the 22nd of December and appointed to be read in all churches and chapels of the Archdiocese on the Feast of the Holy Family, 27th of December, 2020. Stand to proclaim the faith of the church. In the words of the Queen, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came and And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and came a man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Spirit. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to your the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I am believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated?
Every Sunday, there's always someone for whom this is the first Mass here in this particular church since the lockdown. Um, just to explain our one way system, um, this block is the Holy Communion first, that block, and then that block over there. With a bit of luck, we don't pass anyone. We use the French windows over here, and we come back in through the main door. Um, Edward, who's normally on point duty, is at work this morning for chat. Richard, I wonder if you possibly um, do the, the Edward duty. Um, and that way we keep everybody safe and sound under the, as the Archbishop says, under the COVID precautions. Blessed are you, Lord, your honourable creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be thy bread.
a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop of all the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever Ever. Amen. At the sign of this command, forced by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of your Lord's now and forever. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take your away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
joining in this Mass, praying this Mass through the broadcast to pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in Holy Communion now, at least come spiritually into my heart. As if you have already come to me, I embrace you and join myself wholly to you. Do not allow me to distance myself from you. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh in this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated at the cell? Um, there are a few things to say, so apologies. Um, please take a sheet, um, nice coloured one. It'll look pretty on the sheet, on, on the fridge as well as being useful. Um, during this week, obviously we keep the great feasts of the octave, the rest of the octave. Um, the important thing to say is that Mass is at the usual time. Um, every Mass is at the normal time that you expect to find it during the week. Um, and perhaps if I could draw two of them to your attention. Um, firstly, obviously our parish is dedicated to Our Lady and St. John. Now today, in any other year, it would have been St. John's Day. And poor old St. John, I'm sure he wouldn't mind in the slightest, but he's been trumped by the Feast of the Holy Family. Um, however, we're going to have our cake and eat it. So we're going to keep St. John, at least in part, on Wednesday, which is one of only two days in the week which doesn't have um, a, a, a big saint's day. So that's the Mass at half past nine, and glory. And then on New Year's Day, on the 1st, uh, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, all sorts of competing themes there at that Mass. The circumcision of Christ on the eighth day. Um, there's Mass at 10 o'clock. It's a bank holiday. You can have a little lie in. Um, and Mass to start the new year in the most, the best possible way. Um, so Mass at 10 o'clock on, on the morning of New Year's Day. Um, the second little column on the bottom. From the bottom of my heart, both as your parish priest and as me, may I say a thank you for everything over the last few days. Um, the very fact that as a parish we've managed to keep Christmas uh, in some way, shape or form, and if I say so myself, I think we've done pretty well actually under not the easiest of circumstances. Um, it's been wonderful, it really has, and that is thanks to an awful lot of people. Um, about 30 years ago, I thanked um, a lovely, very blunt Yorkshireman for helping out in church. And dear Ken looked at me and he said, I didn't do it for you, young man. Um, <laughs> which sort of put me in my place. But he was absolutely right. Uh, he didn't do it for me. Um, and uh, I'm sure that even now in one of the many mansions, Ken is helping out um, without any fuss and without particularly wanting to be thanked by anybody. Um, but it is right and proper that as your parish priest, I thank everybody who's been a part of this. Um, and also, personally, by May, um, and also Father Jacob has asked me to say this, um, to thank you on behalf of both of us for all of your generosity, and generosity not least, in the most absolutely straightforward dictionary sense of that word. It's been absolutely overpowering, overwhelming. So thank you one and all. And thank you to everybody who's part of this from elsewhere. Um, talking to Father Jacob, um, he tells me that we will see him the moment that his jab works. Um, I spoke to him last night, asked him which mass he'd like to say, and he said, to be perfectly honest, I think he, his first jab is this week, and then he's got the follow-up jab, and then he'll be back with us, raring to go. Um, he's raring to go now, but um, uh, so I've sent him our love as well, um, 
and it's been a difficult Christmas for him. He would love to be nowhere other than here. Um, but of course, he has been um, confined to barracks for, for the feast, which is pretty, pretty terrible, really, for him, poor thing. But he will be with us as soon as he possibly can. Um, and I think that really is it. So, for the very last time in 2020, on a Sunday, now I wish you a very happy, a very holy, and a very blessed week when it comes. The new year when it kicks in may be a different and also a blessed year of grace. And so now I bless you all. Would you please, would you please stand? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel, our Lady, Mother of the Saviour, pray, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for us. Saint John the Evangelist, pray, pray for us. May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.